it came to a point where I wanted to have answers to those questions. Uh, and I just couldn't continue with the Book of Mormon is true or the church is true. I I felt very troubled by many questions and I thought I, I needed an answer to those questions. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Saints Unscripted. I am so excited to be with my friend Gustavo today. We are going to talk about his conversion story a little bit and his faith journey. Anyway, we love you all, and we are so glad that you come and you watch these stories and, and learn about these amazing people we have on our show. So, Gustavo, welcome. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you for having me on the show. Of course. Well, we'd love to get to know you just a little bit. If you could just introduce yourself let us know who Gustavo is. Sure, no problem. Well, I'm Gustavo Hernandez. I was born and raised in Mexico City. I'm 21. In fact, next week is my birthday. Oh, happy <laughs> uh, birthday. And I love drawing. I love books. Actually, my favorite book is uh, Deathly Hallows. <laughs> oh, that's and a good one. I love movies as well. And Ever since I got married, I, I just love to watch movies with my wife. <laughs> and and she was first hesitant about it, but I think that she, she loves it now. <laughs> she's she's grown yeah, accustomed. I, I work and I, I go to college online, and I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, awesome. And you have, and I don't know a whole lot of your story, so I'm excited to get to know this faith journey you've been on. Go ahead and start where you'd like to. Just begin with telling your story of, of how your faith journey has been. Sure. So I was born and raised in Mexico City, and I was also born and raised a member of the church. So when I was growing up, I really loved the church, and I always say that I love the church as much as a kid can love church, you know, <laughs> I, I still yes. I got pretty bored after a while, but I, I enjoyed church. And I remember that ever since I was little, I was very curious about, about life and about the gospel. And I would always ask uh, questions and my parents would always teach me about revelation and, and prayer. And I had special experiences when I was growing up about that. And so I, I guess I had a very normal experience in the church growing up. And when I was a teenager, I actually had some, you know, mental health struggles. I was dealing with pornography and I was dealing with all sorts of stuff. And at the time, I really felt alone. I, I was trying to find things that make me feel better, try to feel hope. And one of the things that I usually did was watching Mormon messages, as it was called back then. Mm -hmm. And I remember that I as well. Remember that when I was in, this is back in 2017. Okay. I was around 15 at the time. And back then, I was just watching one of the Mormon messages. And on the recommended videos, one of the videos was called Three Tests the Book of Mormon Cannot Pass. And I remember mm -hmm. that I thought it was pretty dumb. And I said, well, let's see what those three tests are. You know, I, I wasn't raised to believe that critics of the church and criticisms were all lies and just anti-Mormon propaganda. Mm -hmm. I wasn't taught that, but I, but I believe that. <laughs> because, uh, you know, here in Latin America, most criticisms come from mainstream Christianity. Okay. And for example, in Mexico, uh, you can uh, listen to, to pastors and things like that uh, tell exaggerated versions of church history. Mm. So that's why I got the idea that it was all like lies, basically. Yeah, so, like it was like almost to be expected because it's like other religions, you know? Yeah, yeah, it was pretty common. So I thought, well, let's see if those three tests are impossible to pass. Okay. So I watched the video. It was pretty short. But I remember that when I finished watching the video, I felt pretty um, insecure. <laughs> I thought, well, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that it was just about, uh, 
anachronisms and, and things like that. Okay. Uh, so I was, I don't know, I, I didn't know what to think. I, I was just thinking, man, I, how do I answer that? And I didn't like to be uh, cut off guard. And I wanted to be ready. So I thought, okay, I wasn't aware of this. So I guess I'll just continue to watch videos online to be aware of everything that can be said against the church. And I went through a rabbit hole. I, <laughs> I found many of the mainstream criticisms of the church, mm -hmm. uh, many of the mainstream critics online, on, on YouTube, on blogs. And I remember that I was uh, pretty shocked. <laughs> Maybe not too... Well, of course I was shocked about uh, church history, but I was more shocked about this whole culture I wasn't aware of. Uh, the whole culture of I had questions, I felt lied to, and I, I left the church, or I got excommunicated, or things like that. It was entering that culture that was pretty impactful mm -hmm. uh, to me. Yeah, and it's a much bigger I, culture than like you expect. And I totally remember when I realized that too. Like I can relate with that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, when I was... A, you know, going through the, the rabbit hole and, and learning all about the, the criticisms. I, I found this year's letter eventually. I, I read it. And, you know, everything. Book, Book of Abraham, Temple, uh, Church Finances, Polygamy, all of that. And so I remember that, that one time, for some reason, at first I didn't question the church or its truth claims. But I remember once I was just watching a video and they began to talk about Joseph and Freemasonry. Okay. And I remember that that really affected me. I didn't know what to think about that. And back then we had Joseph Smith's journal. And I remember that I, I took the, the book and I tried to find information on 1842. And I remember that one entry said, uh, I just came back from the Masonic Lodge in Novo. And I remember that that was the first time I really questioned whether Joseph was a prophet. I, mm. I felt uh, it was confirmed by him. So I think that was hard. So I remember that I, I, I kept uh, doing research. And as I delved deeper into the, the community of, of people who who take a look at criticisms with a naturalistic approach. I remember that I I felt alone. I, I think that uh, one of the things that I didn't like was that in some videos and some blogs, the conclusion was always uh, Mormons are, are stupid. And if you know about these criticisms and still believe, there's something wrong with you. You're doing mental gymnastics. I remember mm -hmm. that. Mental gymnastics I, I always, is used a lot. Yes. Yeah, I, I didn't like that. And and I felt like I didn't belong anywhere back then because if I tried to tell someone from the church that I had these questions, they would tell me that I shouldn't look into it and I shouldn't worry about it. But at the same time, if I talked to people who knew about the criticisms and chose to leave, they would tell me that I'm doing mental gymnastics. So yeah. I... I I didn't feel like I belonged anywhere. Was this so something you, it, sorry, was this something you talked to your parents about at some point too? Uh, so I never told my parents that I was looking at criticisms online. I had some questions. I tried to ask the questions, but I was pretty hesitant. I, I thought that I would just, they would just tell me to stop looking at it. I, I tried to tell my bishop and he said that. <laughs> so, I, it, it came to a point where I wanted to have answers to those questions. Uh, and I just couldn't continue with the Book of Mormon is true or the church is true. I, I felt very troubled by many questions and I thought I, I needed an answer to those questions. Uh, so I remember that we had a youth conference that year. And the mutual theme was uh, James 1.5, Ask of God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, 
that year was uh, very focused on on the first vision. And mm -hmm. I remember that on Jews Conference, uh, we we went to Teotihuacan, which is an archaeological site in Mexico City, and a, a brother who who's a historian, he gave us a, a tour of the place, and he he told us about his conversion story. He told us that he got baptized because uh, in Mexico City, the now Mexico City MTC was previously a church-owned high school. Mm -hmm. And I remember, and he said that back then, if you were a member, uh, your tuition was cheaper. So he got baptized <laughs> to uh, pay less. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So he said that he didn't believe a word of it, but he just wanted to pay less for school. Uh, <laughs> but he said that eventually he read the Book of Mormon and he felt a spiritual confirmation that it was true. So when he told that story, I remember that I thought, well, I haven't read the Book of Mormon cover to cover. I mean, maybe a couple of chapters on Nephi, maybe Abinadi, but that's it. So I said, okay, if I'm going to stay in this church, if I'm going to believe it is true, then I should probably do that first. So I was just a few weeks away from my birthday, and I was about to turn 16, and I would be a priest. So I said, okay, I need to finish the book before that so I can have a testimony of what I'm doing. So for the next three weeks, I just read the book. I I read every chance I got. I was listening to it, it at when I was on, on the bus. I was reading it in the mornings, and I was just trying to finish the book. I finished two days before my birthday, and I remember that I knelt down and I prayed, and I took Moroni's promise, and I asked if this was true. And I think that that prayer was one of the most sincere prayers I've ever had, because I, it was a conversation with God. I, 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 I told him, I, I didn't just ask, is the Book of Mormon true? I said, well, you know, you know what I've been through, you, you know the questions I've had, uh, you know that I, I've, I've only been interested in in, in following you, and that's what I want. And so the reason why I'm asking for a testimony is, is because I, I'm i asking you to, to lead me where you need me. So I remember that when I finished my prayer, I sat down, I, I pondered for a while, and I didn't receive the, the end sign where the Mm. Uh, spirit, spiritual experience, the confirmation or, or the fireworks or the burning in the bosom, I I just felt, I felt peace. You know, I, I, I wasn't worried about criticisms that much. So it, it felt yeah. good. So I thought, okay, I guess, I guess that's it. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I can continue. Uh, so I said, okay, I will continue. And I, I said, I need some answers. Uh, I will have faith because of this experience I've had with the Book of Mormon, but God, if you're listening, I, I'd appreciate if you could help me finding some answers. Uh, so at this point, I've been looking at criticisms for about five months or six. Uh, so, And all my time doing research, I never found a faithful approach. And Suddenly, a few days later, I found online an article that was titled A Faithful Response to Seer Stones. Okay. And it was an article from Fair. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. So I found Fair Mormon back then, and it felt so refreshing. And I thought, what? There's, <laughs> there's a whole organization focused on these questions. Yeah. And so I just started to, to go... Um, online, and I found a faithful response to pretty much all criticisms I was looking at back then. And I remember that one of the biggest criticisms was about the temple. And I was 15, I hadn't go through the temple yet, uh, but I, I learned probably more than I should have. 
And I remember that I didn't know what to think about it. As I mentioned, I was pretty apprehensive about Joseph being a Freemason. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, when I was watching one of those videos on YouTube, one of the recommended videos was called Mormon Temple, Sacred or Secret by that Three Mormons. That familiar. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> so uh, it was just uh, the original three hosts doing interviews on, I think it was BOU campus, and they were just asking questions, and I thought, And then I decided to take a look at the channel. The channel was pretty new. And, and for, those, a, for those in our, sorry, I'm going to have to interrupt you here. For those in our audience who don't know Three Mormons, that was what Saints and Scripted used to be called when we first started. And then we changed our name after President Nelson's thing. So anyway, just a tidbit there. But back to Gustavo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, the channel was just a few months old back then. And I remember that. I was pretty happy to find the channel too. Eventually, I saw that they uploaded a video titled An XX Mormon Story. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay. That's a good one. <laughs> And it's uh, Dusty Smith's story. It's sort of a person who left the church for a couple of decades and then came back. So that story was pretty special to me. I also had some experiences. Uh, Uh, literally, I would be at church and then a stick counselor would stand up, interrupt the bishop and say, I don't know why, but I feel like I need to tell you this. And they would say exactly what I needed to hear back then. So little by little, I began to feel someone was aware of what I was going through. And that was pretty special to me. Eventually, at, on that general conference, Elder Callister gave his talk on the Book of Mormon. And I remember that that was also an answer to my prayer. That was pretty special. And I found um, all the books he's published. I, I got some of them. And little by little, I began to find this whole other world of people who do have these questions, have found answers, um, and have chosen to, to stay in the church. So that was very special to me. I, I found this other community. And... It was funny because I thought, well, now that I feel my faith is strengthened, I want to do something about it. And I thought, maybe I can write a book. <laughs> But I was 16, and we don't have that sort of book here. So I, I, I didn't know if anyone would publish it. <laughs> I love that you're like, as, as a teenager, like thinking about these things. Like, I just, I just got to point that out. I think that's cool that you at such a young age were very aware of just your faith in that time. Like, I don't know if I could say the same for myself, you know, as a 15, 16 year old. So I think that's pretty cool that you were just so aware and ready to share the gospel. Thank you. And, and, you know, I think that this happened at the right time because right after I chose to believe then all of the things, well, all of the recent things the church has made regarding history and things like that came out mm -hmm. just a year later, a saints came out. And suddenly the, the church community was much more aware to talk about these things. So I appreciate it. Was, I had these questions about now instead of in the 80s. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, it was pretty special. I, but I, again, I thought, can I write a book? But then I thought no one's going to publish or no one's going to believe a 16-year-old <laughs> talking <laughs> about church criticisms. Uh, so... I thought, well, I I could do a YouTube channel, but then I thought, you don't even have a phone. How can you do that? <laughs> uh, so I thought, well, dang it. And I, I just scrapped that. And I guess I, I continued. I, I just had a normal teenage years in the church. And I went on a mission. I served in Guatemala. And when I went through the temple, I was pretty scared. Actually... <laughs> Uh, by then, uh, you already had the faith and beliefs uh, segment, okay. and I I sent a message to David, and I said, "Hey, I'm about to go through the temple, and I don't know what you think of it. Uh, do you have any tips?" <laughs> so did he? He did was he very kind. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> and he was very kind, and and he helped me. So I I went through the temple, and I and I loved it. I was scared that I was going, since I was already familiar with different elements of the ceremony, I thought I was not going to enjoy it mm. or that I would be overly critical. 
but it was it was pretty good. It was a a fun experience. Well, not fun, but a a, a beautiful it, experience. Yeah, and, I get what you mean. <laughs> uh, so I I was also a temple worker uh, for about a month before I left. So I was there every day, uh, the whole day. Oh, awesome! <laughs> uh, so, that was in the Mexico City Temple, correct? Yes, yes. Me- well, was actually, that your closest temple? Yeah, I don't know why I have it here, but I have it here. <laughs> Here's oh, the picture. Oh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> I went and visited uh, When I was at the MTC, we went and visited that temple. But I was so bummed because it was closed for construction that day. So never got to oh, go inside it, but I saw the grounds. It's beautiful. Yeah, in fact, we always received uh, missionaries from the MTC. They would always uh, come and go <laughs> really? on those oh, days. Uh, so it was pretty fun. I, I served in Guatemala. I was there for a few months, but then the pandemic hit, and I was reassigned uh, to serve in Tijuana, Mexico. Oh, I yeah. served the, the rest of my mission, and as I mentioned, I didn't uh, delve too much into it, but I had some mental health struggles uh, all during my life, so uh, it, I think I hit rock bottom towards the end of my mission. Mm. So I was sent home early, Around, I was 18 months into my mission when that okay. happened. Uh, so that was just a couple of years ago. I remember that I, I came back home and I was pretty disappointed. And I was, uh, I was sad, you know. <laughs> um, some things didn't work out too well. And I, I wanted to, I don't know, to, to make it up some way. Um, I found my wife. We met. And we got engaged, and we got married, and she's she's lovely. She's helped me so much on, on this journey. And I remember that when we got married, there was an Instagram story from Saints Unscripted. And it said, hey, we're looking for conversion stories uh, to post on Instagram. So okay. if you have anything, you can share it with us. And I remember that I, I sent my story, and I thought, well, this is... Uh, a way I can share my story. I, I've never shared my story publicly uh, before that. So I sent the story and, and I mean, I don't know who responded, but they said, uh, cool, we're getting ready for publication. Uh, could you just, uh, you know, because I was pretty sad back then. So I was just uh, describing how anxiety impacted my mission. And then they said, but I'm still active. <laughs> so <laughs> they said, uh, could you, um, Maybe explain what happened between those two things. <laughs> and I remember that I I tried to find a way to make it sound like I had a happy ending. Uh, but but I felt sad because I thought I didn't have one. Mm. Uh, so I, I never replied. <laughs> oh. uh, and I I really wanted to do to do something. You know, I, I was um, in college and I was working. And I felt like I was in, in our home all the time and I thought I wasn't doing too much good. So I was thinking, okay, what can you do? I want to do something, but what can I do? And then I I saw that, that you uploaded an episode with uh, Stephen Murphy uh, from Herminism with the Murph. I, I really yeah. like his story. I, I watched his channel and I sent him a message and thanked him for creating the channel we we texted and he invited me to come on his channel and i i shared my story there and i remember that when we had an interview for his channel i had this sudden a uh, boost in in motivation <laughs> and i thought hey i can i can do something like that i i can create a channel I, I don't need a studio I, I it's possible <laughs> yeah so I I told my wife hey this is uh, something I've been planning on for around six years now <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'd like to do it I'd like to create the channel so I thought okay uh, what's the name and I I was thinking about it and I chose the name viajes de fe which is uh, faith journeys in Spanish and so the next week, I created the channel, I recorded my story, and that was my first video. <laughs> uh, yes. So I thought, well, now I need guests. <laughs> I, did, I didn't have anything planned. I, in fact, I was just brand new. I didn't know what I wanted the channel to be. 
Uh, but luckily, I, I've had friends and people from from channels that I I watch to find answers, uh, and it's been amazing. I was able to talk to to Dusty Smith. I was able to thank oh, him awesome. uh, for for what he did and how he impacted my my own story. I I talked to Jeff Roundy from Latter Day Saints Q and A. He really helped me a ton too, and I was able to thank him for that. I I also talked to this a brother who was a historian who talked about receiving a testimony of the Book of Mormon, mm-hmm. and I was also able to thank him. So it's been it's been wonderful and and beautiful. I. Now the channel is just a couple of months old, and I've been trying to to see what I want to focus on. Sometimes I try to do more like Murph, more like maybe scholar research, mm-hmm. uh, and sometimes I do maybe the Saints and Scripted route, which is uh, you know faith positive or, or more uh, celebrating the gospel. Right, so uh, I'm still trying to to find my voice, uh, but in this past couple of months, Green the channel has been a a huge blessing. And as for my questions, my testimony nowadays, I, I still have it. And I guess that once you come out of a faith crisis or a faith journey, you you're not the same. You you think differently. You see things differently. So I guess I'm I'm more skeptical than I was before, mm-hmm. but I still love the gospel. Do I have unanswered questions? Yes, but I think that it's more like that anachronism chart that Fair Mormon showed a few years ago, and they said uh, when the Book of Mormon was published, there was like eighty anachronisms that weren't proved, and okay. maybe one. That was proven right. And now in 2019, we have like 70% uh, confirmed and 30%, maybe like 20% not too sure and 9% not confirmed. So right. And I guess more keep really, coming, right? Yeah. And, and I think that's what happened to me. Uh, maybe I had like 30 unsolved questions and one solved question. Now I have maybe like 80 answers and maybe three questions or four. So I do still have questions, but I think that the ratio uh, is more skewed towards the positive side. So I I have a testimony. I I love the gospel and the church, uh, and I just want to use the channel as a way to to help the 15-year-old me (laughs) around the world (laughs) who have questions and hopefully (laughs) help. (laughs) And is it is it still called the um, Viajes de Fe? Yes. Okay. So we can send our followers. We can link your channel down in the description. And it's so you do it mainly for it's in Spanish. So for our audience who right, is it mostly in Spanish or do you do some English too? Yes, it's mostly in Spanish. I've done some interviews in English. If, if you go to the channel right now, there's my interview with Jeff Roundy. Mm-hmm. And I had an interview with Steve Beinecker from Mormon Book Reviews. Oh, yeah. yeah. So those two are in English. Uh, the rest is in Spanish. I, I've had, I, I'm just adding subtitles to an interview I had with Stephen Smoot and Brian Hales. Awesome. So those should be out in the next few weeks. But yeah, uh, if any of you, uh, don't speak Spanish. There's a couple of videos <laughs> on the channel. <laughs> no, I think that's wonderful. And and I think a lot of our audience does speak Spanish. And I just think that whatever language it is in, we need more content like this. And I'm glad that you were able to find... I guess I'm glad that the timing was right when like our channel came out and when all of those things people are starting to realize, like, hey, we need more... Um, discussion, positive discussion about the church on YouTube and online. And since then, there's been quite an influx and it's been amazing to see, honestly. Um, it's it's a miracle, I think. And one thing I love about your story is that, first of all, you told it very well. Second, I like that you went through kind of the ebbs and flows because that's the nature of a conversion story. You know, kind of you... You had your lows when you were 15 and then 
you were good. And then kind of another low after your mission, like that's just kind of how life goes. And, um, where, like whatever time of life we're in, our conversion can change at times or just, just our mental health and, and lots of things affect us. So I'm, I'm grateful that you shared that aspect of your ongoing faith journey. So thank you for sharing your story. And do you have any final words of advice, maybe for, for young people, perhaps young people who are, who are watching our show, who might be teenagers at this time and and are being bombarded with all these things. Do you have any final words of advice for them? Yes. Uh, You know, when I was uh, 15, 16, and I listened to faithful members talking about criticisms, uh, they would always say, if it's full of emojis, don't listen to it. But, <laughs> but now uh, that, that doesn't apply very well because now we have, you know, scholars and, and many different people who talk about criticisms of the church and they don't use emojis, you know. Maybe they don't yell. Maybe they don't go to that extreme. Mm. And so I guess my advice would be that if you face, if you find criticism of the church um, and you look at different ways to look at it, if you're trying to find a naturalistic way to explain away the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints, uh, you will only be disappointed. And I'm not saying that because there's no proof or anything like that, or there's no reason to believe, you know. If there was no reason to believe in the church, I wouldn't be here because I I don't believe in blind faith. Uh, But what I'd say is that if the church is true, then what Christ teaches about the Holy Ghost is also true. And if that's true, then that means that the only God-approved way of learning the truth of the gospel and of his divine nature, it's through the Holy Ghost. So that might be inconvenient, that might not answer every question, but if God exists, and if that is true, then that is the way to gain a testimony. So people will share their points of view regarding history. And all those things are valid, you know. Uh, currently, there's this new trend of crime podcasts mm-hmm. and cults. So we learn about Heaven's Gate, about the FLDS. So we're pretty, um, what's the word, skeptical. So every time we look at the past, we just look at, we think that everyone is a Warren Jeffs. We think everyone as a Jeffrey Dammer. So we tend to be more cynical towards people in the past. Uh, so so I think that it's good to learn about this. And as you look at faithful uh, members and, and critics, I, I think that if you're a teenager, just be aware that everyone has their own experiences and there's a reason why they believe what they believe. They're, they're not caricatures. Apologists aren't just people who are obsessed with offending at all costs, and critics are not people who are obsessed with destroying people. You know, mm. uh, everyone has a different reason. Some people may be caricatures, but that doesn't mean that all of them are. That's so my point. recommendation is to to be fair to both sides if you're investigating both, and. I'm a member of the church, so I'm more towards the faithful uh, approach. But if you want a testimony of the truth, read the Book of Mormon, pray. If you read the Book of Mormon, ponder, and you can study different stories and seek spiritual experiences. If you can go to the temple, go there. If you can serve in your calling, do that. And that will create an environment where the spirit can testify. And if you receive a testimony, but you still feel like those questions aren't answered, I'd say, watch Saints Unscripted. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And 
be patient. There are some questions I had, and I found answers to them a couple of months ago, six years after my initial faith crisis. So seek spiritual testimony. If you have that, even if you have unanswered questions, you will have the patience necessary to be patient, wait, and you will find answers. I love that so much. That that was so well said, very solid advice. You know, keep keep the Holy Ghost with you. Read the Book of Mormon. Not all of our questions will be answered. I'm not trying to summarize everything that you said, but I love, I just love that answer. And um, thank you again for being on our show and for sharing your story with us, Gustavo. Thank you, Caitlin, and, and thank you, everyone who stuck around to the end. <laughs> yeah, everyone, thank you for watching. And be sure to check out his channel. Uh, we will, Viajes de Fe. We're gonna put it in our description. Go find it because, I mean, we just should go and support everyone who is sharing online positively about the gospel. It's such a wonderful thing. Thank you all for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Please follow our channel. And we love you all, and we will see you next time.